Welcome to Future Fridays. Uh, my name is Guy Bartram, Director of Product Marketing at VMware. And today I'm really pleased to be joined by um, some folks from Etisalat to uh, talk about their migration capabilities, Cloud Director availability. So let's start with a, a round of introductions. Um, Abhishek, why don't you go first? Can you just explain who you are and, and what you do? Hi, Guy. Uh, thanks for having us and to be a part of a Feature Friday. And uh, just to start with my introduction, my name is Abhishek Kunal. Uh, I've been in Etisalad as an architect role and uh, more into like on the VMware cloud provisioning, uh, designing um, what are the new capabilities which we can bring in into the VMware cloud, plus with the multi-cloud capabilities. Uh, so I've been working on those on, on those architecture related things. Awesome. Thank you, Avishak. And Shishank? Uh, hi, guys. Uh, Shishank here. So... I'm working in the Etisalat uh, as a senior cloud engineer. We are part of the operations teams. So my primary role basically is uh, onboarding new customers, then uh, taking care of daily operation tasks. And also I'm involved in this uh, migration since we have an S60 now. So we are involved in that project as well. So that's pretty much. Thanks, Vishen. Uh Niha? Hi, Guy. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Nihad. I work with Etisalat. I am the project manager uh, working on multiple technologies, primarily focusing on compute and uh, VMware. Yeah, that's a gist. <laughs> Thanks, Nihad. And lastly, Rahul. Hi, guy. Uh, thank you for giving the opportunity in the Features Fridays. Uh, so we all are from Etsala, uh, from public cloud department. So uh, which is having uh, like multi-cloud department deployments, including VMware Cloud, Azure Cloud, AWS Cloud, and Oracle Cloud. So now here, uh, we're going to discuss on this uh, VMware Cloud feature and the migration capabilities and the migration approach, the project plan, how it help our operations and all from uh, like NSX V2T. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Rahul. So... Sounds like um, SLA is, well, I know SLA is one of our, our biggest cloud providers and you are doing an awful lot of um, diverse services by the sounds of things with your public cloud services there. You've got all of the VMware partnerships in play, um, a large environment. And uh, you guys mentioned several times that you're you're using cloud direct availability for the, the migration to um, from NSXV to NSXT. Uh, Abhishek, can you just provide a little bit more insight? What is that? How's that actually progressing? And what does that environment look like? Uh, absolutely. So, Guy, uh, as we know that uh, VMware is moving away from NSXV and uh, NSXT is the new network layer, which we need to provision as well as customer need to be migrated on the new layers of it. So uh, I, I feel that that was a great opportunity for most of the service provider and even for the uh, enterprise customer so that they can refresh their hardwares, they can even work on the new designs, which in fact for us was very important because uh, we have built our cloud a, a year before, um, like long year before, and which required a lot number of design uh, related uh, strategies, mm -hmm. which were not followed. So that actually gave us the capability and opportunity to refresh all uh, the design related issues that we have been facing in, in implementation as well as in operation. So I, I take it that way. Uh, that was the first um, um, kind of uh, work which we needed to do. So I would say that the journey started in 2019 around. Um, mm -hmm. The first set of tasks was to understand NSXT because mm -hmm. uh, it was totally a new uh, feature for uh, most of the VMware Fox, um, mm -hmm. as we know. NSXT brings a lot number of features, a lot number of design decisions that need to be taken at the very first stage. And as well as the product was also getting matured. So yeah. that, that was one thing. Um, obviously on, on this migrations, uh, we had to make a lot number of uh, hard decisions um, to migrate it from the older V center to a new V center. I know this is always a controversial, like uh, why you guys are changing uh, old vCenter to new vCenter, but uh, there has been a lot number of uh, servers which we have added in last many years because of all the uh, um, uh, the demand from the local customers, which is being based out over here. So mm -hmm. um, as uh, we will talk about from the architecture point of view, 
we have uh, two data centers in in UAE region. Uh, one of them is in Dubai, one is in Abu Dhabi. And we wanted to have uh, a kind of a site specific um, a data center approach, not as like what we were following where we have uh, everything in a single fault domain. And uh, on, on that basis, the first very stage was to educate our team members on NSXT. And uh, in fact, VCDA, we were using it for many, many of the customers. We took an opportunity to use this as our, um, our product to do the migrations. That was the, uh, the primary thing that we have taken. So Other than that, um, obviously, uh, they were like uh, uh, design decisions on the NSXT, which we deployed. And as I was saying, there was like a lot of changes which were happening in NSXT and integration with vCloud Director. So I would say there was a good uh, um, uh, um, like sessions that we have seen from Feature Friday, which helped us a lot and uh, made us to really take down that decisions. So yeah, I brilliant. would say that was the first step that we have taken. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. And, and so it's interesting that you used um, Cloud Director availability to do the migration. Did you make a decision then around like consciously not using the NSA, uh, NSX VTT migration tool? Uh, in fact, like uh, when we went through the migration tool of VCD, uh, at the initial stage, it didn't have that capability to move it from one old vCenter to new vCenter, as well as from a vCloud director to uh, another vCloud director, if we wanted to move. I, in yeah. fact, like uh, this feature was introduced uh, in the previous version, but uh, we had uh, uh, timelines, obviously, uh, the NSXV licenses and the support was going to go. So those decisions we had to make uh, earlier on. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, as in demo we will be showing, we created our own set of scripts uh, to understand the customer environment because there were a lot number of features which customers were using and we had to take down that decisions, how to get it migrated. So yeah. we developed like our internal dev team really worked hard on that front. Uh, to get a very similar kind of script what uh, vCloud Director migration tool used to use. So I would say it's what's, it was a good learning as a team for everyone in Etisalat. And uh, we are like, I would say proudly, we can say that we have migrated around 80% of our customer till, till the oh, end. So, that's great news, great news. Yeah. Um, uh, so so yeah. Nihad, um, just to switch to you. So this is uh, obviously quite a large project or program activity how have you found the not only the learning curve and getting the, the kind of the team up to speed um but also you know the 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 um the logistics of kind of managing all of these customers and migrating these customers across is there anything there that you want to kind of talk about in terms of um things that have succeeded or problem areas that you've had uh the learning was quite uh intense because uh, there were uh, multiple things that we had to consider and which we were um, not using on a daily basis or let's say something that was new to us. So yes, the learning was really good, but the major uh, major problem or the, the biggest challenge is to get your customers aligned to uh, your schedule, getting a, a you know, customer uh, go ahead uh, from their side. You no, know, and mm. just letting them know that you no, know, what what are we trying to do here? What are we trying to achieve with these changes? Uh, sometimes, in certain cases, there are downtimes required, and many of our customers are not really, you know, uh, keen on having downtimes. So, mm. convincing them how how NSX T will improve their environment, what are the benefits that they're getting? So, these these are the biggest challenges that we've uh, as a team faced. So, yeah, but uh, many of our customers understand the benefits and uh, some of our customers uh, you know, are uh, more than, you know, uh, more than cooperative in, in yeah. that aspect. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's always a, it's always a challenge to ask a customer to um, expect some downtime or schedule some downtime with them. Um, but I, I guess the, the benefits in this case far outweigh that, that small amount of downtime that they're going to have. Um, uh, Shashank, you've been doing a lot of the sort of customer onboarding. Does that include the the customer migration, actually physically migrating them? Yes, yes, we we are involving those migration as well. So you've been heavily using um, Cloud Direct availability for this. Yes, yes. And how's your experience been? Um, I mean, 
Nihal just said, right, it's quite tricky to get the customer aligned, I guess, change windows and schedule downtime. Um, how's the experience been of trying to fit customer migrations into a, you know, an allocated slot? Uh, so, yeah, that's that's a big, uh, technically is not challenge, but getting customers uh, ready for this migration is a big uh, task for us. So what we do just to cut short the downtime to the minimal level, what we used to do, we will just make sure our backend infra is ready from NSXT perspective and also the replication and final sync has been ready when we initiate the migration. So yeah. that's, we need to make sure that the uh, main part is the replication. If it is sync, then we can, we can sh cut short, uh, heavily cut short the uh, time window for this migration. So once everything is placed, we will just do a failover and we'll, uh, before we will inform the customer that during this window, uh, don't make any changes so that uh, all the data or application will stuff, uh, he will be able to have it post the migration. So yeah. once we once we do the failover from the network point, it's, it won't take much time for, for us to, to change the routes at the core network level as well. So yeah, I was going to say there's some work required there. If you're not using the the, the migration tool, then you're going to have to actually change the networking at the yes. target end, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And the great part about this week cloud availability, I don't have to do a failover for a single VM. So if I have uh, all the VMs for the customer in single VM. Uh, on the basis of let's say application, so I can do uh, just initiate failure for that entire VF at a uh, single go. So that, that's no. really helps a lot for us. And yeah, and Shashank, I guess you're really liking the the new feature in um, VCDA. I think it was in four point three where we brought in the um, ability to schedule a final sync before the change window. Yeah, uh, that we can do it. But here, what we do as a practice is whenever we start the migration, uh, just before that 15 minutes, we will do a final sync manual also, just to make sure that everything is in place. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, that's that that really helps uh, before before the migration, the final sync. Excellent, excellent. And and Rahul, over to you. So um, the you're the um the architects, right? That's, uh, that that's your role. I would be mostly into the shop, managing the operations and the project management and uh, like, you know, business side mostly. Like, okay, okay, I, sorry, I, okay. I deal with the clients of uh, the pre-sales meetings and uh, mostly convincing the customers. <laughs> yeah. And how's that been? So obviously Exislat is kind of, um, you know, as Abhishek mentioned, right, you move into this new environment. Um, it's now going to be more secure. It's going to be able to offer you more services and How's that kind of conversation gone across, gone across with the customers? How, it, you know, are there specific things that customers are looking for that you're able now to, to satisfy, whereas previously on the old environment, it was harder to do? So, yeah, basically here in Etzel uh, they have uh, multiple clouds, cloud departments. Okay, they have private cloud, public cloud, they have telco cloud, Sony Ericsson cloud. Okay. So we public cloud, we handle, in public cloud itself, there are many hypervisors running. We have, we used to have Hyper-V Microsoft services also. Now, totally it's into VMware V cloud and we have Azure cloud and Oracle AWS, et cetera. So here, let's say our customers are segregated into like uh, categorized on the service they provide to other clients or vendors. So our customer categorization is done on like, you know, for uh, mostly, uh, uh, SMBs, enterprise, government, health sector, education sector, and all. Right. So let's say if I take a government customer, government customer, as per the local government laws here, they want to, uh, like, you know, go with the data integrity. So all their cloud services should be under one platform. So if it, if it comes into the public cloud from one business entity, it's a public cloud. So the Azure services and the VMware cloud services. It will be with Etzelat. They'll be dealing with Etzelat. Right. So being a reputed tele telecommunications and a service provider company in this MENA region. So, so uh, NSX V2T, this NSX T, it helped mostly on this is multiple hypervisors and uh, like um, multi-cloud deployments. And mostly it's a software aligned uh, infrastructure, right? So it helped a lot there. And uh, mostly like uh, security aspects of NSX T is also good. So that became an added advantage for us to convincing customers. And, you know, we have prepared a template for them 
to understand we gave some knowledge sharing sessions there were many kts happened for customers so uh, so some customers we have some uh, customers who are uh, giving service on technology also for other banks and other sectors in uh, uae so the customers who can understand uh, technical who have knowledge on this technology vm vmware what is nsxt what is nsxv why we have to move the migrate to nsxt uh, so it's quite easy to convince them and quite easy to ask them to migrate and of course it's a call from the vmware the support of nsx uh, we gonna expire uh, right so most of us are very uh, cooperative and uh, we have almost completed 80% of the migration so some customers that are 20% like uh, it's uh, accepted on the risk like okay because they have some critical applications and uh, business uh, critical requirement so that's the reason this migration the rest 20% migration is handled in phases right yeah, yeah so you got the sticky bit left to to come <laughs> <laughs> okay great thank you uh, uh rahul so um abhishek so back to you you were kind of explaining the the overview earlier on and obviously there's a lot of uh, value with um, now with NSXT and, and VCD that you can additionally kind of upsell and provide to customers things like uh, dynamic firewall policies and advanced load balancer and stuff like that um, how uh, so you've got that you've done that 80 percent now um, you've been using cloud direct availability to migrate from kind of the old cluster to the new cluster you've got your dual data centers Dubai and Abu Dhabi um, how has the experience been using um, cloud director availability to do this? Uh, having said that, guys, so we cloud uh, director availability has been like a, a magical uh, product for us. <laughs> and uh, I would say it made our life easy because uh, it's always a problem from a customer and even from the uh, compute point of view, whether whether we can do that real DR or not, because for us, it is kind of a DR activity that we are doing for each and every customer, uh, mm -hmm. creating a new environment, um, which we are being taken care of very, very well from the network and even from the infrastructure things. But when it comes to the customer related application, their backend data, uh, I would say we haven't faced any single problem with any of the customer data integrity. And that is mm -hmm. one of the magical thing about vCloud Director Availability. Uh, yeah. I would say we tried with some other products also, uh, but uh, it wasn't that expected results that we have got with uh, what we get from vCloud Director Availability. As well as it is mostly uh, tightly integrated with the VMware products, because when we try to see for another product like features like uh, data center groups, these things is pretty new for um, on the VCD layers. Uh, mm. which is well integrated in, in vCloud Director Availability. That, that I yeah. can really, I can comment on that. Yeah, you mentioned a really interesting point. So you've actually um, done a DR event, same thing as a migration, right? A DR event for 80% of your customers. Absolutely. What sort, of, what sort of volume of VMs are we talking about here? Do you have any idea how many that would be? Uh, I would say the numbers that we have right now, it's around 3,500 number of VMs that we have uh, already migrated. Uh, that is through VCDA. And I would say uh, from the operation and even from the uh, uh, making those plan, it, it was a, a, a very difficult task because asking for the downtime, asking for the cutover time, that, that has been a, a very challenging part for any, any of the service partner because Every day we had to migrate around like 10 to 15 customer and the amount of VM, the amount of data on the VMs, it, it has been a very tremendous. And that, that's one thing which uh, uh, really helped us from the vCloud director availability. Yeah, it's really good to hear that because I, I do kind of, you know, when you, when you think about DR products, you, it's very easy to set up a replication and, you know, you're, never, you're only as good as your last test really. And typically people don't do much testing. So if they only do testing when there's actually a DR event and then it becomes a panic because maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. But um, this is great to hear that you actually set up the replications, you've done the cutover, the failover, you've proved that the applications are up and running and in a stable state, even though you've had to make network changes at the, the target sites. Um, 
and that's that's no small achievement that's a that's a massive achievement to do that for 3000 um vms absolutely that that's one of the uh, i would say uh, the strongest part of our team which really worked hard uh, because everyone has their own set of skills so now to match each and every guy's skill that was another challenging part because your part is network the other guy's part is compute side and and mm. talking to customer convincing that things is another set of team and yeah. after then after the migration it's all about application sometime application really works very well um, it's always a challenge to really convince the customer that your application was working uh, it might be not working because it's an application issue so sometime we have to pitch on to the application related troubleshooting also so i would say it, it was a team team effort uh, because we know the like uh, what were the problems that we were facing in our cloud and this is an opportunity to really refresh each and everything and make it easy for for any kind of activities which can happen in future yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I think you're cutting down the complexity significantly. Um, you know, Shashank said that using V apps is going to make things a lot easier when it comes to like having to do some additional networking tasks at the other end. You can leave leave everything in the V app alone and just making all of the edge changes. Perhaps um, you know that's going to definitely help. Okay. Um, well, guys, I've got a really good idea of what's going on now in uh, Islat and the migration and where you're at. Do you want to, um, you mentioned the demo earlier, uh, Abhishek, do you want to perhaps dive into that demo now? Yep, sure. Uh, so I will let Shashank to share his screen and then we can show what is uh, a kind of a demo customer environment and okay. uh, what are the phases that we take for the migration uh, and, and what is the time of the cutover for it. Okay, so Shashank, I can share oh. his screen. Okay, got it. So this is a uh, vCloud uh, director where uh, we had, uh, for demo purpose, we have created one org, which is in NSX V. Uh, I'll just give it a short overview of what exactly it is. So we have one VApp. With that, I deployed one uh, Windows uh, virtual machine where we have uh, web services installed in it, just to try mm -hmm. the networking part after the phase or reachability of the application and all. We have an org network. And then we have the edge. Now in this edge, we have a couple of services. Uh, one is we have the edge firewall. So I had added just uh, two a couple of rules. Uh, one is for internet access. Uh, so VM can access the internet. And one is for inbound port AT to access the web service. Another service what we have in edge is the NATing. We have SNAT and DNAT. So, and the third services we are using from this edge is the SSL uh, VPN. So I configured the SSL VPN. Uh, this we have for all the customers. So we will make sure that once we do the payload to N60, uh, all those parallel rules and netting are in place and the application functionality will be working uh, as uh, before. So the only, one changes what we will have is uh, for this SSL VPN at the edge level, we are just uploading it to Palo Alto. So that functionality will be working, but it will be via Palo Alto, not the edge who will uh, give the services for uh, SSL VPN. Apart from this, okay. these two services, edge firewall and NATing, this we will have in the edge in NSXT also. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Just to comment on that, uh, Shushank, um, yeah. see, um, so guy, basically we have a, a wide varieties of customer and this is one of the demo where we have a couple of features that we have taken, but there are some customers which has uh, many other features which they are using like load balancer as a services, um, even the distributed firewalls. Uh, in fact, uh, they have uh, features of uh, distributed routings also, which we're running yeah. in NSXB. But uh, with NSXT, uh, we had to identify those customer, like what are the services my customers are being using it. So as a very first phase, I would say, it was uh, very important to identify what are the services customer are running and what kind of scripts that we have to develop so that we can migrate those kind of features on NSXT layers. Now, yeah. That's the another task I think Shashank will share you um, and uh, he will demo like what is the internal scripts that we have developed. Did you okay. use the, um, I know you're using um, 
the uh, you're, you're using VCDA to do the migration, but did you use the and you're using your own scripts afterwards to do the networking changes? But did you use the migration tool to do the analysis piece? Uh, that's right. Yeah. So we have done a couple of analysis uh, because that was one of the great feature in our migration tool to understand mm -hmm. like uh, at what stage and up to what level we can really do the migration from the uh, migration tool. So we did that uh, activity two times and yeah, we got a fair result to understand our environment very well. Okay, good, good. Okay, so this is the website. Uh, just to test uh, the page I created on this uh, server, uh, just to check the application functionality post uh, migration. So this is the NSXV uh, infra. At the back end, uh, this is the NSXT. Uh, we used script to create all the org or BDC. I will show, I will give you a quick uh, overview what how we use the script and back end what exactly it is uh, doing. So this is the NSX, uh, this is the org which we created at the NSXT level. So we have a virtual machine we won't see right now because we didn't do the failover yet, uh, but we have the org uh, ready. Uh, it will be the same subnet it will be using. This is the org, and this is the NSX uh, T1 uh, uh, edge gateway we have. If you see the firewall rules, everything is replicated as it is. If you go here, you can see the internet rule, HTTP rule, and this is the default rule. And we have the NATing as well, SNAT and DNAT, which is created and replicated similarly what we have over here. Okay, so you've you've basically pre-migration and you've you've set up the entire target yes. end networking and security. Yeah, exactly. So this is what uh, day one task is for us when we schedule any migration. So I will just give you a quick overview what exactly we did uh, in the script. Uh, we have the PowerShell script uh, which we run to replicate no. all the uh, backend infra. Let me share your screen this time. Okay. So this is the script uh, when we when we run this. This is a, uh, our DevOps team has developed the PowerShell script. So when we run the script, so we have to provide the details uh, about the existing infra. What is the org I need to migrate? So once I run the script, it will ask me uh, to which v, uh, data center, v cloud director your current organization is hosted. So by default, this is our uh, one uh, v cloud director. So by default, I will give this, uh, by default, it will take this data center.e1c.e, which is our HRC vCloud director. So after that, it will ask me the source org, which you want to replicate. So this is our demo NSXP org. Now, since org might contain a different, uh, uh, many uh, org VDC. So let's say if I have a customer who has different org VDC, and I just want to make it on a specific uh, VDC, uh, uh, from that NSX, not the all the VDC inside that particular org. So I can choose specific org VDC or those by just separating comma, or else I can select all the org VDC within that particular org by just pressing the enter. So this yeah. this is just uh, one. Is it self managed or not? We have different categories of customers which are self managed and full managed. So self managed is everything will be taken care of by the customer itself. VM deployment is management and all this stuff. But yes, we will do the migration since at backend infra we are the one who is responsible for it, not the customer. So okay. now we will give the V Cloud uh, NSXV admin credential. Uh, this is required to pull all the details because what will happen is this will this script will log into the NSXV. It will take all the edge configuration. As I told you, we have an edge firewall natting and all the stuff. So mm -hmm. I need those uh, credential. Uh, so that script can log into it, it can pull all the con configuration and uh, copy it to the destination or VTC. So once I provide this NSX uh, V credential, uh, at the down, I need to provide what will be my destination org. So this org, what you see right now in the screen, I didn't create this manually by going here. This is all being taken yeah. care by the script itself. Yeah, okay. So I just provide the name. Uh, this is the org I need to create. Then there will be a user in this uh, org, so it will create those particular uh, user. After that is the main thing that I need to provide. Now, when I need to migrate it to the NSX uh, T, uh, 
we have to make the backend infra deal like t0 my uh, storage profile all the stuff this this is the one time configuration initial thing i need to do at the start uh, so we have those available i provided that this particular or should be part of this provider vdc if i have another provider vdc let's say an another v center or another uh, cluster where this customer is reminded i will provide those specific uh, provider vdc yeah. uh, then network pool uh, this is uh, to create uh, the org network where it belong then storage profile i can have since we have different customer having different storage profile if this customer goes for specific i need to provide that specific uh, storage profile in the script uh, yeah. after that it will just go on and log into the uh nsx uh, v infra then it will ask me uh what is the t1 gateway you need to deploy now in nsx we used to have only single edge but in nsx yeah. we have concept of t0 and t1 for multi tenancy so we already have t0 created at the back end uh for this is a multi tenant environment so we have a single t0 so for every customer we will have a dedicated t1 gateway and all the services edge services natting and all those stuff will be uh served by this t1 so i need to give the name uh the script will create it now here, here i need to provide what is the external network now in t1 nsx t uh, world we call it as a t0 gateway and in v cloud director we the t0 is nothing but an external network mm -hmm. so see that uh, we already have this section network ready so i just need to provide the name of that external network then this will ask me for the cluster id now since we have services on t1 i need to put that in specific edge cluster so it will i need to provide this cluster id so that this particular t1 will get placed on this specific edge cluster uh now scripts has already have the nsxp login it will show me what is the uh, ip it has the the edge in the nsxp what or what network it belongs what ip it has i just need to verify it and just press it and sir if i need to if there is an issue i need to provide some another ip i will i will just mention that explicitly over here now there is one option of null route now as i told you this is multi tenant environment we have single t0 mm. uh we have different uh, network slash uh, 27 we are for each and every customer in t1 and smb customer we have slash 27 network but uh, since we have a single t0 just for the security purpose to make sure that none of the tenant is communicating to any other tenant we will adding we are adding this null route the 10.0.0/8 so all our customer whatever hosted behind this t0 is having only this specific uh, subnet yeah that uh, makes sense just, just, just extra bit sure of security then yeah 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 mm. So that's it. Now there is extra layer of configuration that we are doing here. Uh, we have management service layer. We have antivirus. We have monitoring tools. So just to make we what we are doing, we are using the script to add those rule automatically in the new T1 gateway. So this will add the service layer rule. So if I want to connect uh, to my monitoring, the server need uh, to connect the monitoring uh, component also. a uh, kvm manager for a license activation also to the cement tech so all yeah. those rule has to be there in the t1 right so i don't have to go and manually create in t1 so what we did is in this we are used this opportunity so we use this script uh and using the script itself we will add all those five six whatever rules we want from the management uh, service layer so that's what it's asking if you want to add the service layer rule i said yes now which site as abhishek told you already as yes sir before that we have two different data centers one is hrc and one is kca so every site has a specific cement tech manager monitoring servers and all those stuff so i just mention here this is the hrc site so that all the specific rules will get added in the and not for the another site yeah. so when this details is provided the script will start uh, is uh, work so it will start uh, creating the or it will just give me the summary what i think is going to create and once i check it if i found everything is okay then i will just press final yes and it will start at the bottom so i know um you you're using ter is that the bcd terraform provider that you're using there yes yes yeah i can be using the terraform so that was kind of refreshed so or the support for NS, nsxt was kind of extended some months ago 
did were you guys waiting for that to be updated before you could actually configure everything or are you working with some workarounds whilst you know terraform built support for nsxt uh, uh in fact in fact on that front uh, guy um that was the first learning that we were having it like uh, whether we can automate the things of nsxt layers with the help of uh, terraform yeah. uh, we understand uh, it is still in the uh, uh in the phase of uh, going to get into the support model but right now this is just for the implementation uh, but whatever the operation related tasks that we are doing that we are doing with the help of vcd layers itself not from the terraform okay. scripts Okay. But yeah, we will wait yeah. uh, for for that kind of support to be coming up there on the VCT layers. Yeah. Okay. So once the I provide all those details, then script will start its work. It will start creating the uh, uh, VDC and all those stuff, and it will mm -hmm. start uh, creating the users what I provided in the script. Then we create a team, and it will start uh, uh, adding those uh, rules in this. Uh, particular uh, T1, whatever, what is created uh, in NSXT. So once it is done, if there is any issue in the script, it will, it will show me what all thing has been failed, or else it will just uh, add if it is all successful in the green. So once it's done, yeah. Quick, quick question for you. So obviously you're just kind of um, creating an empty shell really of the networking components and security components. Do you do this yeah. like before time and then at, at cutover, then just kind of flip the switch on the main routes, or no, how no. do you this? This we do before we do the migration. So let's yeah. say on fifth, uh, we have this uh, migration schedule at 3 p.m. So we'll be doing this for two days before for because for this, I don't have any dependency, there won't be exactly, any yeah, yeah, uh, it gives you time to troubleshoot create, it as well. Yes, uh, because at the top network layer, I didn't do any routing, so traffic it's still going to NSX3. Until and unless yeah. I do a failover in that route, I will change the route. But there will be a dis uh, disturbance in the traffic. So yeah. that's what we do. Uh, just two, three days before we prepare this backend intro ready. And after that, we will do the migration. Once we know that, yes, customer has given the migration uh, go ahead uh, window for this day. Uh, so two days before, then we will start the replication using vCloud availability. So this yeah. all are day one and day two tasks before uh, the downtime window. Yeah, that's quite nice. So you can get it all prepared, all ready to rock and roll, and literally you're just doing the, the final replication. Yes, yes. And it, 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 allows, it allows you the time also. Let's say if there is an issue when, when we, while executing a script mm. or is there an issue at the back end in Pra. So we get a time to do a troubleshooting and, uh, instead of going taking a downtime and the downtime window itself, we will get a surprise and all the stuff. So it helps yeah. help us to, to uh, do if there is any issue also. So once we run the script, you can see this org is created. We will have this uh, org VDC uh, exactly same what is there. Then we will have the org network as well. And uh, this T1 edge will be created and all the rules and natting, whatever there in NSX V edge, same will be replicated over here. Yep. So once this part is done, then we move to vCloud availability to replicate uh, the uh vms whatever they're in source nsx v or to the nsx t or which we created from the script so we already did the replication just to save our time because replication definitely takes time to copy the mm -hmm. data so this is our source uh, site and this is my destination site which is an nsx t so if you see in this nsx t in the name desk uh, you will find uh, one this, which is actually show, uh, uh, representing that this VM is being replicated in this particular org. Yeah. So uh, that's that's a VR replay. So if let's say if uh, that this particular organization or customer has multiple VR on the basis of uh, application, different different application. So you can just replicate different different VR, and customer says, okay, I just want to fail over only this specific VR, which is hosting my this application. So I don't have to do everything. I will just select the specific VR and I will just do the failover. So, so on that basis, like uh, if I can comment on, on that one, um, they have like, we have experienced a lot of customer, they have their test environment also. So we usually test them um, and then only we actually touch their production environment. 
So this is a way and this is a strategy that by which we are getting the confidence from our customer also. That yes, everything goes fine for their test environment and dev environment. And then we can go with the uh, production V app. Got it. Yeah. So let's start with the failover. Uh, so once once this has uh, been replicated, we can state when, when this last sync has been happened. Uh, it's 1.44 p.m. just six minutes before now. So... I'm just doing a final sync. Sorry, I'll speed this one, this poem. <laughs> Tell you what's really nice when we do these uh, demos and we're actually using production level kind of equipment. It's nice to see the speed that things run at because yeah. I'm always watching stuff in like, you know, um, nested environments and it's just terrible. <laughs> uh, since this is a small VM, so replication sync has been completed now. So let's uh, do the failover. Uh, I already configured the network settings, so what IP it should pick. So since we are using the same network, it will have the same IP at the destination end. Uh, so failover I initiated now. So let's see what all starts. So basically what it will do, it will just delete this name disk and out of it, it will create a new virtual machine and yeah. And what sort of um, application testing do you guys do? Do you actually work with the customer to access their apps? I mean, I know we're using a, a kind of web server here, but some web servers, for example, have hard-coded IP addresses in them and all sorts of things. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's say if customer is not managed by us, so if application we are not managing. So we will involve the customer application team also during this window. If we are managing, so what we can we will do is we will have our application team also with us during this migration. So once we do the okay. failover, uh, first thing, if it is unmanaged by us, we will take the sequence uh, of the virtual machine power on uh, from the customer. So because since we are doing the failover using vCloud Direct Availability, so VM basically it will like it will it is powering off and it is powering on on the another side. So we need to have a specific order that we need to make it up. Since if it is multi-tier application, if it has a, a web app and DB server, mm -hmm. so we need to have a particular sequence to make it up and make sure that application is running fine. So we will do this, or else sometimes what happens is uh, services doesn't come up automatically after the boot. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that before we do a migration, we will check what all services are being in it. And once we are done with the failover, we'll just do a check in the service level or we will run a net stat command to check if those services are listening or not. Yeah. Uh, if, okay. if there is any issue, then accordingly, we will do a troubleshooting. If there is any service required to be started manually, we will do it. If we need any customer involvement, if we are not manning the application, we will just involve them to check their application before we do any changes at the core network level. So Shashank, for the ordering of startup, are you using Cloud Director availability runbooks to do that? Uh, yeah. So we can we can have a particular sequence that we can run. If we have the sequence detail with us, we can have this uh, uh, done in the in the uh, configuration itself. Like I did the yeah. network changes uh, that after the failure, it should uh, pick this particular IP. So okay. many times what happens is when we deploy the new customers in vCloud Director, it will take the IP automatically from the pool, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say if I have three VMs running in specific org network, so when we provision, when I provision it, vCloud Director will automatically assign from the pool. So let's say first VM will, uh, whichever boots, it will use uh, that first available IP. Yeah. If I do a failover, and if third VMs comes up, if I don't mention the sequence, and if a third VMs comes up after the failover, that particular VM will take the first IP in the pool. Mm -hmm. So what I can do, I can do the network setting, and I can change that after the failover, this particular VM should use this particular IP. 
actually this vpn is got failed because i asked my network guy to change the route for this particular public ip so yeah, yeah so you're using vcda to kind of assign the ip as well right yeah so if you see it it it, it has a time that specific ip what we wanted 25.0 to this particular vm yeah not any other ip so it is done so once uh, this vm is done i can go here to check see it is failed or perfectly fine so we are good to power on the vm at the destination uh, So this is an NSX V VM that is now running on NSX T. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Got it. In fact, uh, we are actually working on some of the customers' environment where we are doing V motion rather than uh, shutting down the VM and uh, switching on the VM on the destination uh, V center. So that is basically for some of the major critical application customers. So that that's the plan that we have right now. We did for some of the couple of customers, but yeah, um, it all depends. Uh, we try mm -hmm. to mark the customer on that basis. Yeah, yeah. So right now, if you see this particular website is, I'm not able to access it. It's still rotating since we have done the failover. So <laughs> let me power on the VM. So VM is booting. So Abhishek, well, whilst that's booting, do you um, foresee a, a future where you might um, perhaps go to the NSX VTT migration tool for the rest of them, or are you going to keep with this mechanism that you've built? Uh, in fact, uh, that now, as I said, like um, we are moving from one V center to the another V center. And the new feature has been introduced in the V Cloud mm. Director Migration Tool. So I, I see that's going to be a good opportunity to use it. In fact, we have used in a uh, in couple of customers' environment, and it also works very, very, very fine. But yeah, I, as I said, it's all about coordination that we need to have with the customer. Like, yes, we are going to do the migration. There could be a little bit of downtime that is required. So yeah. that, that's one thing which uh, we, are, we are planning for the other rest of the customer. This uh, this one actually this project we have managed in uh, by many teams. Let's say this is one of the team which are representing this migration or giving a demo. So mm -hmm. we have a couple of teams. Let's say we have uh, split this operation into three teams: team A, team B, team C. Okay, so there will be a scheduled uh, roster prepared for uh, each team, and the assignment is being done on the customer basis. We'll go on a call with customer. We'll explain to the customer. And uh, we will uh, schedule the downtime. We'll get the downtime, and we'll let's say, uh, as Shashank mentioned, like if application is being managed by customers. See, in the cloud, we offer all the models, like let's say IS, PaaS, SaaS, right? So uh, majority here uh, we provide IS and PaaS as a service. So most of the applications are being managed by customers. Uh, so we'll call their vendors. The vendors joins the call. They will understand how it works. So we'll get the availability of the customer and the vendor. We'll go on a call. We will do the migration in that call itself. So the steps of this migration has also been done on very high level and will be discussed with the customer before uh, the scheduled date and time. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So guys, so VM is booted. Now we can see inside the VM also, we are able to access the internet. So that means outbound connectivity is working fine. And if you see, I'm perfectly able to load the web page. Yeah, awesome. And that actually, even we migrated on the top layers uh, <clears throat> from older firewall to new firewall. So even that migration we did in this in this uh, whole thing. So that actually gives us a good opportunity to really uh, um, a change what what is required from the security compliances because that that are the things which uh, we have been getting as a project for, for a long time. And, and that is a thing which we are trying to achieve in, in a single migration project itself. Yeah, I, I think, well, the process you've got here is is pretty rock solid. And um, the ability then to offer, you know, additional uh, capabilities on top as you do that migration 
is also really nice. I mean, you can bring you know additional security profiles in, dynamic profiles, layer seven um, uh, firewalling, etc. So there's a lot more kind of value you can bring into the BCD environment now with the migration, um, which is great, really great. And like you said, I'm sure it's a great opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, and the one best part here, you know, what we have with the vCloud ability is now, see, the source VM is there running as it is. So now since everything is being migrated, I will just go here and just shut it down. And mm -hmm. customer will start using an application. If in case there is any issue in this migration and we don't have any time and customers want his original site to be up and running fine as it is. So what we have to do is I will just shut it down the destination what we migrated since source is already available. We didn't delete it, the source VMs. It will just in power power of state. So mm -hmm. what we can do, we will just make it power it on and at the core level we'll change the route. So this is another rollback plan for us in case there is any issue in the migration. Yeah, sure. You've always got the source, so yeah. And I guess once they're migrated, are you using Cloud Director availability to replicate between um, Dubai and um, uh, Abu Dhabi? Yeah, yeah, we are using the Cloud Director availability for, for the replication. Actually, we are using two uh, solutions. One is SRM as well. Uh, it was being used before when we didn't have the Cloud availability. Uh, so that at that time we were using the SRM for, for the DI solution, but yes, for new customer which are hosted in vCloud uh, Director, yeah. we are using this vCAP for as, as a DI solution. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's great to see you, uh, Shishank. Thank you very much for preparing and, and walking through the demo with us. It's um, like I said, I think you guys have got a, a kind of a rock solid process here for for migrating your customers and. It's great to hear that you've kind of migrated to 80% of them already, well on track to uh, to meeting 100%. Um, and it, that environment, when you've done 100%, are you going to be kind of decommissioning that or are you going to be bringing those resources into the new environment? Yeah, with the rollback plan, we, we have also a process of a deletion of the VMs. Like uh, we have agreed some timelines with the customers. Some customers, they don't want to delete the VMs in weeks time. Like they want to keep it like at least for a month. Yeah. So yeah. so the process of deletion and decommission is also there. So it goes uh, like, let's say 80% is complete in that 80%, 60% of the customers, uh, we have already deleted their uh, workloads. Okay. So yeah. Fully even, yeah. Even from the infra point of view of uh, what we are doing, like as we are progressing with the migration, the resources we are keep on adding on the new uh, environment. So obviously this is this is a good opportunity that we're like we are refreshing our hard base also and mm. making use of our old hard base also at the same time. Yeah. I was gonna say, because there's a lot of good uh, good hardware probably now freed up, um, which can yeah. be reused for different tiers of service in your new offering. Absolutely. Brilliant. Okay, guys. Um, well, thank you so much for for your time today and walking us through this this uh, migration solution that you've built and are actively burning down on. Any any final thoughts from you guys? Anything you want to add to what we've already discussed? No, it's it's a great opportunity. I would say uh, uh, to be part of Feature Friday and demoing the thing, sir, guy. Um, and uh, the whole idea is that we wanted to show the VMware community uh, how we have been doing. I know there's a lot. Uh, service provider and providers are working to do the migration. So they can probably take this as a reference point and BCDA as a migration tool, um, we can use it in this way also. So that are the things which we wanted to share as an experience as well as yeah, what are the other yeah. projects which is there? It can be even uh, included in the same project also. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure to have you guys on. And um, I'm really pleased to see that Cloud Director Availability is working out for you and, and providing you a, a good mechanism for delivering a migration, a safe and uh, safe migration for your customers. So once again, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you Dan.